Hi everyone, it's Agnes. I wanted to introduce you to a beautiful story and this person, Phil Ryan, he's actually a friend of mine and his story is in my first book, A Person of Interest. Uh, the links to my books are down below under agnesfivarelli.com. Now, he has got one of the most beautiful stories and I wanted to read this story to you today because I'm going to be interviewing Phil live. Phil and I actually met when we were doing our coaching course together and his story is such a beautiful story and I'm going to share it with you and then I'll talk a bit at the end. So his story is called A Love Story. Now his desire was for a soulmate and the time frame was two years. So his story goes like this. I am a gay and proud man who owns his sexuality. I've tried with all my might to live a lie, denying my true self. I married, I fathered three children. In 1968, as an 18-year-old struggling youth and raised in a strict Catholic background, I sought counseling from a parish priest. This was 1968 and I hadn't yet learned to think for myself. He in turn advised me that once I married and proved myself as a man by fathering a child that all this garbage in my head would go away. Alternatively, he suggested electric shock treatment. A Catholic psych psychiatrist he knew used aversion therapy. However, he informed me that if I did not fight against this evil affliction, I was on a sure pathway to hell. The following Sunday night, this priest used the revelations I had told him to give lectures to my peers in a Catholic youth group using revelations I had discussed with him in a generalized fashion. Not that I revealed anything sleazy or sinful. I merely asked him to help me in my struggles. It wasn't in a confessional booth, so consequently he believed he was not bound by the seal of confession. Confidentiality did not enter into the equation. I subsequently married and fathered my first child. My then wife had difficulty conceiving due to polycystic ovaries and following treatment she conceived. She gave birth to a little cherub named Roseanne. Both my wife and I were in ecstasy. We adored her. My wife subsequently conceived again, though unfortunately miscarried early in the pregnancy. This turned out to be a blessing in disguise. At the age of three, Roseanne, Rosebud we called her, was stricken with an insidious brainstem tumour. She subsequently died as a result of this because of bodily breakdowns, choking to death. She was three years and five months old and it was then in the aftermath of grief that all that I had been suppressing for 10 years rose to the surface. I separated from my wife and shared a place with a gay workmate and his partner. This turned into a tumultuous time of loss and mental torment for eight months. I had a brief relationship in this time. My partner did not believe in monogamy. I found that hard to accept. My life also had a brief relationship. My life, okay, my wife also had a brief relationship that didn't work. We were about to go forward with divorce when we decided to give the marriage another try, me still believing I had to fight it, my sexuality. In short, we got back together. I fathered another two children, Amelia and Michael. I adore them. The marriage lasted 10 years after that. I had become a compulsive workaholic suppressing my sexuality. We both reached a point where we were both becoming sick and tired of being sick and tired of the heartache and misery in our lives. I loved her, but I did not know how I could completely love her. It was a gigantic wall I did not know how to get over. We separated. I chose to live a celibate life in a country town where our home was, a small town with a small town mentality. People talked. I was responsible for my two children, but moreover accountable for their well-being. My former wife allowed me unlimited access to the children. For this, I was grateful. I could still be there and do the things we had always done together. During the time of separation, I came across a church that was open and receptive to gay people, founded by a former South American Baptist minister. 
Troy Perry is his name. He was publicly excommunicated from his church because he out ousted himself. The church he founded is called the Metropolitan Community Church, the MCC. I attended there and found true peace in my soul. They helped me see that Jesus was a friend, a mate, and not the enemy of gay people. They abide by John 3.16. Read it if you can access it. From that verse, I learned that I am who... So ever, plus a book written by Troy, The Lord is My Shepherd and He Knows I'm Gay. And also another one of his books, Do Not Be Afraid Anymore, really empowered me. They also taught me to accept spirituality and leave religion behind me because as I discovered and explored, religion is for the people who are afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for people who have already known it. Here I could receive communion and not be rejected from a communion because I was gay, something I had experienced in the Catholic Church. The gay women of this church were so beautiful. I made many, many wonderful friends with these girls and guys. Wow, how the law of attraction works. I had three relationships in my time since separating. The first lasted a year with an alcoholic and a mild substance abuser. Another was with a good, intelligent and likable guy, unfortunately a sloth and a compulsive couch potato. That lasted 15 months. Next was an academic and an intellectually arrogant guy. He could be extremely intimidating. He liked too many vodkas and uppers. That lasted eight months. Once again, because of my self-worth and limited thinking, I had attracted these wrong people into my life. So I decided after this, as I was getting older and wiser, I'll just give relationships a break. Go with the flow, enjoy my friends and have a happy social life. I undertook a diploma in child studies as I was then thinking of working with children. I have a wall hanging above my bed of a youthful and smiling Jesus. I absolutely love it. After my last breakup with the academic, I used to lie on my bed looking up at the wall hanging and talk to that image of Jesus. Oh, it was then that a copy of the book Ask and It Is Given came into my hands through a close friend of mine, my former wife. We still care for each other and love each other, but with a special love born from pain. I am so grateful and richly blessed. I thank my angel Rosebud for her part in this. I truly believe this. Asking and believing it is given, I look up at Jesus' image and ask, if I am meant to have someone in my life, could you allow this to happen? I just let it go. Not being fully conscious of a divine plan that was to unfold. I was too busy studying doing charitable outreach programs to guys suffering from HIV and the work of the MCC. One Sunday morning, I was awestruck by the presence of a wonderful, courageous soul named Angela, a transgender woman who read a Bible passage for that day. She then followed up with a talk from a book by a theologian named Marcus Borg titled Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. She tied it all in with the Bible passage. I was gobsmacked at the intelligence and skill of her interpretation, plus this inner beauty that emanated from her. I later went and spoke to her, telling her how much I enjoyed the talk and how I admired her and honoured her true humanity, plus her strength and courage to be who she was truly meant to be. We became church friends. One Sunday, a little further down the track, Angela invited me and a few others over for lunch at the church service the week before. On that Sunday morning, I was doing outreach work with the HIV guys and my mobile was turned off. I arrived at Angela's place to find her in a dressing gown and a little worse for wear due to having a cold. She postponed the lunch for another week, leaving a message on my turned off phone. Angela then suggested we go down the road to a local pub in the Rocks area of Sydney where she lived have a bite to eat, listen to some great Irish music. I was delighted. I had grown up with Irish music. My dad loved it. We ate lunch. The pub was crowded. It was difficult to converse in the musical gaps. We decided to go for a walk to the botanical gardens and have afternoon coffee. We talked and we talked. Her conversation, I remember, was so stimulating and intelligent, talking about topical things. I also learned I, it was also then I learned of her passion for cricket. I had grown up with cricket. I had grown up in a cricket environment. We also went to the Irish pub the following Wednesday night and listened to music again. It was a wet and cold winter's night. 
So with work, the following day, we called it an early night. For a year, we courted and eventually when my flatmate moved out, we moved in together. We've been together for nine years now. We married in October 2010. Having a holy union, a rite of the MCC church, overlooking the harbour at East Belmain, then celebrating with close friends and my two adorable children, Amelia and Michael. In having Angela in my life, using her words, I tell people we are a gay couple living out a straight relationship. For me, I have found happiness I never thought could be possible. We have so many compatibilities, musical tastes, being the greatest. We rarely, rarely argue. In fact, we both have the ability to diffuse potential problems. We face the challenges and work through them, not sweating the small stuff. Like a lot of other people, we do, do get stressed when we're tired, but Angela is my true soulmate and I adore her. How the law of attraction has wonderful ways of working. One more happy thing to share. My daughter is off to New York to perform her cabaret show. She wrote, produced and has staged throughout Australia, winning the Sydney Fringe Festival last spring. It's called Storm in a D-Cup, a disarmingly honest production about growing up with a gay dad and dealing with the curveballs life can throw at you. She performs on 42nd Street on the 22nd of July, 2013. The number 22 is turning up time and time again in life for me. I wonder if this has any special significance. I am immensely proud of Amelia and Michael, my son. In hindsight, I have done the best I could possibly do given the life and circumstances for me. Oh, Phil Ryan. Now, I will uh, just put down below Phil's contact details. I want to say Phil is actually a coach, obviously like me, because we met in our coaching course. I am blown away at his story. I mean, this all started obviously well before 1968 where his story began, but I'm going to interview him because I really think his story is incredible. And I think you know, there's many of you that are not heterosexual that contact me via email to work on this self-love stuff. And it just seemed timely that I've come back to Sydney and Phil and I had contact and I thought I'd really love to introduce you to him. So stay tuned for the interview with Phil shortly this week. I will put his details down below because he will hop on and answer your comments in the threads. His email address is there so as usual like with every story people are there to help so lots of love hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one